Do you struggle with feeling like you're not good enough for your career, life, or family? Do you sometimes worry that you're in over your head when you think about starting a new job or new life adventure? All of these feelings are imposter syndrome. I'm Beretta Fleur, and I am a podcaster, author, and confidence coach. And today, I've got a few tips and tricks to kick that imposter syndrome to the curb and get you on track to living the life that you want to. Welcome. I'm Beretta Fleur. For those of you who may not know me, I am an author, podcaster, and confidence coach. If you haven't already, please go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. I'd really appreciate it. If you enjoy this video, please go ahead and give it a like. So let's get started. Imposter syndrome. What does that mean? You've probably heard the term before. It basically means what it sounds like. Feeling like an imposter in the middle of your life, whether that's your career, your relationship, maybe you're starting a new business, maybe you're having a kid or adopting, you're maybe getting married or entering into like a serious partnership, and you're just not sure that either you're ready or you're just not sure that that's really you. Or maybe you're just not feeling like you're as good at this as people seem to think you have to be. So the first way that imposter syndrome can manifest itself can be the sense of, I'm not prepared. First of all, I want you to remember this. Beginners have value. Beginners have value because you are bringing a fresh perspective to what you're going to start to do. And that means you can put your stamp on what you're doing and really make it a part of your experience and your journey. There's never been a point in time where somebody is starting off on this journey like you are. So be a little proud of that and be a little excited about what you can bring to what other people have done before. The second point for feeling like I'm not prepared is seek out a mentor, go online, do research. Right now as a beginner, you're a sponge. You're not prepared, so go get prepared. There's so much information out there. There are so many people waiting to mentor you and so many people who do want to help you. I got inspired to record imposter syndrome as episode one because I was starting a podcast. So as I was struggling with it and doing the work, I actually figured, well, this could be helpful for other people. And there's so much information out there from all the pioneers who've gone before me and who are helpful and want to share information. I was a sponge and I basically went out on the internet and went out on social media and learned all I could about how to podcast. That sense of beginners have value took me from feeling ashamed that I was a beginner to being excited that I was a beginner. The third thing I want you to remember when you're feeling like I'm not prepared is be patient with yourself. Perfection is the enemy of good. Oftentimes when we're starting something, we just feel like we need to get in there and know everything right off the top of our heads before we can even take a first step. When I started my podcast, I really didn't know too much about what I was doing. I had some information enough and equipment enough to know that I was ready to move forward. And if you actually listen to episode one of my podcast, I didn't have any lead-in music. I didn't really even have a script. So what I did was I recorded the episode and edited it and then sent it to some of my friends and family and I asked for honest feedback. And they had some criticism. It kind of hurt to hear. I was like, oh, I'm rambling. Oh, okay. But it helped me get better at what I'm doing. So now I use an outline. I got my little script. That's basically so I can stay on track and on message with y'all, because otherwise I'll just ramble. Perfection is the enemy of good. Just because I didn't have it perfect didn't mean that I couldn't start doing it and then learning as I go. I can only get better. The second way that imposter syndrome can manifest itself is feeling like I don't have anything valid to say or I don't have anything to add to the conversation. The first reason you might feel that you don't have anything valid to say or that you're not bringing a voice to the conversation is that 
maybe you are being an imposter. And I know that feels a little bit weird to hear. In my podcast, I did a story about how I had tried a business venture. And in that business venture, I really wasn't being my authentic self. It dealt more with an end result rather than a journey and helping people along the way. It also was very financially focused. And I found for me, money is not a motivator. It's not going to be something that is the carrot on the stick for me. The carrot on the stick for me is engagement and connecting with people and making people's lives better. So if you do feel like you don't have anything to add to the conversation, maybe you're in the wrong conversation. So just take a couple minutes to think about when that comes up, that could be a trigger and it could actually be telling you that you need to move on into something else or another venture. The second reason you might be feeling that you don't have anything valid to say is that maybe you have spread yourself too thin or that you're trying to be too many things to too many people. Oftentimes when you're mixed on what your message is, you can't stay on message because you don't know who your audience is. You might have a problem saying valid things because you don't know who you're talking to. When that happens, it might be time to niche down. For example, I have a podcast. My podcast is primarily for women. And guys, that's okay, you're more than welcome to be here if you are. But I find that women tend to be attracted to my message more than men are. Besides women, I tend to appeal to women who are from age mid-20s to late-20s to early-30s on into their 50s and 60s. So that's kind of my niche, and I'm okay with that. I can't be all things to all people all the time. Life is long, and I might not always do this, and I've done other projects before. So if you're trying to figure out what you should be doing right now and what this new venture or new chapter means to you, niche down. Figure out your message and your audience. If you spend a little bit of time on that, I bet those imposter feelings will quiet down a little bit. So the third way that we can deal with the feeling of, I don't have anything to say, or I don't have value, is comparing yourself to others. The reason why life is so exciting is because we have others. Do you want to be like everybody else? You can't. You cannot. Your journey and your life experience is your own and nobody else can do it. Nobody else can be you. Don't compare yourself to others. Does that mean that we never want to be somebody else? Are you kidding? I wish I was tall. <laughs> I wish I had so many skills that other people have, but you know what? I don't. I'm me. I do what I do, the style that I have is my style, and oh well, some people might like it, some people might not. The point is, be yourself, be as authentic to you as you can be. In Beretta Fleur Du Jour, episode 4, Toxic Relationships, which you can find on berettafleur.com slash podcast, I go into something called BYOBF, be your own best friend, and what that means is Learn who you are and learn to like who you are. BYOBF, be your own best friend. Don't compare yourself to others. As we discussed in the first part of this, you can learn from others, but don't try to be others. All right, home stretch. Number three. So the third way that imposter syndrome can manifest itself is actually kind of sad. The feeling of, I don't deserve to be here. That's kind of a hard thing to deal with, and trust me, I've been there many times. When we look at what we deserve, oftentimes, especially now, we're thinking about privilege. And so let's reverse engineer that and walk it backwards. So the first way you can deal with the feeling of, I don't deserve to be here, is to walk it backwards and reverse engineer it and think about what kind of life, what kind of venture, what kind of success do you think you deserve? And that's actually, when you think about it, kind of a weird limit to put on yourself. There is no end to the amount of impact that you can have. Think about some of the most important people in our society and the impact that they have. So instead of thinking about, I don't deserve to be here, think about what do I deserve? Do you agree that people deserve to be loved and cared for 
and happy and successful, there's a huge difference between not deserving something and being entitled to something. Do you think that about yourself? Do you think that you deserve to be in a loving relationship or a mother or a father? Do you think you deserve to be a partner or to be loved? Do you think you deserve a job in which you can make an impact and you can support yourself and be financially responsible? Think of it this way. The more that you have as far as success or energy, the more you can give. The more that is in your cup, the more you can dump out or give to others. When it comes to love, success, impact, and enjoying and loving your life, there really isn't a limit on that. So when you think, I don't deserve to be here, take a moment and think, what do you deserve? And if you were to have a lot of success, if you were to have a lot of money, if you were to have a wonderful relationship, how would you use that to help other people? How would you use that to further your message? How would you use that to help people and make a huge impact? All right, imposter, let's go through it one more time. The first feeling is, I'm not prepared. And how do we deal with that? By remembering that beginners have value, by getting as much information as you can with a mentor or a teacher, or by doing your own research, having patience with yourself, and remembering that perfect is the enemy of good. Number two, I don't have a valid voice or I don't have anything to say. And how do we deal with that? Go find another venture or a conversation, niche down, and fine tune your audience and your message. Stop comparing yourself to others. There's only one you, you're taken. The third way that imposter syndrome manifests itself, I don't deserve to be here. Walk it backward, think about what you do deserve, and think about the ways that what you have can help others. Finally, imposter syndrome goes hand in hand with confidence. I have videos coming up that will deal with confidence, or if you wanna do a deeper dive with me, I do offer confidence coaching, and you can find out more about that at berettafleur.com coaching. Thanks so much, see you soon.